Hey everybody, Scott here again with a couple of Aperture workflow tips for you. So if you've read my book or you've watched my you know, videos on my blog, you know that I have a, a very structured workflow. But everything in my workflow is really a guideline. It's no hard and fast rules. And there are times when you change things up or do things either in a different order or something you know uh, a little more differently just uh, to, you know, to get what it is you need to get done more quickly. Uh, it might be based on you know, what you're after or the type of project that you're working on. So uh, here's um, a couple of examples that came up while I was working through this particular project. I'd gone out for a, a sunset uh, shoot and you know took lots of pictures of the same subject over and over again. You know here just pictures of the waves, looking at you know their abstract shapes, and then getting into the sun sunset, and setting up the tripod, and just you know firing you know sets of shots after sets of shots. You now obviously I've bracketed here and I've already done the stacking. Again, I've changed the order of things. I did the stacking while the import was coming in because I could do that and I had the time while the images were dragging in from the camera. But uh, what I wanted to show you here is you know, I could spend lots of time going through and rating every single photo. That's the first step in my workflow. And most of these are the same. Um, you know, I've got 173 photos to go through. When I bracket in particular, what I'm usually most interested in is looking at the the base exposure, the you know the uh, zero exposure compensation. Um, I bracket sometimes for HDR, uh, but more often just to make sure I get the right exposure. That's my little crutch in the world. So um, how to look at just the zero EVs in our filter HUD? You can pull up an EXIF rule if it's not there. Grab it out of the uh, the drop down and filter on exposure bias in the range from zero to zero. I know that seems stupid, but if I try to do just is zero, nothing shows up. So you gotta use in the range. I don't know why, it's a bug somewhere in Aperture, but it's one we can work around. Once you've got that, then you can start looking at just the images you're interested in. And for this purposes here, you know, I'll start going through the sets of sunsets. So I will go into my main viewer here, and I'll just use the right arrow key. I'm looking through to see, you know, what looks interesting. What do I like? You know, um, let's say I like the sky there. I'll toss a flag on it. You can see the flag show up there. Keep going through. Um, you know, that's looking cool. I like the waves down here. Throw a flag on it. Um, that sky's pretty cool. Um, we're starting to get more of a twilighty feel here. Actually, got a surfer out there. That's pretty neat. You know, and go on through. The you know, waves crashing here is neat. You know, maybe you like. Like this one here, there's a little reflection. Oh, went too fast. There's a reflection there. Actually, these ripples look cool. And so on and so forth. You can go through and just toss a flag really quickly on the images that you want. And from there, back to your main viewer, grab the flagged images. There they are. Select them all, option A, command two. I'll rate them as three stars. Now I've rated those. And when I go back to look at those um, in the uh, sorry, in the full project. When I find those orange photos, here's one. It's in the middle of my stack, and I'll just select the rest of the stack, do a three, option two for orange, and I know that this is a set that I want to do some next steps on, keywording, post-processing, and so forth. The other tip is, back to the flagged selections that we made, is when you have a, a sequence where it's the same subject over and over, you can use the zoom tool and your uh, focus points on you, if your camera supports this, to figure out you know, what's um, which one of the shots is the sharpest. This isn't the best example for that because you know, if the clouds are going to be soft and moving anyway. The waves will be soft and moving. You know the rocks, yeah, they'll be there. Um, but you can turn on the focus points if your camera supports it here. You know, and you can click on it to turn it on. Option F does the same thing. I happen to be in manual mode. When I, when I did this, so I don't have a particular square that's red. Normally the, your, your prime focus point will show up in red on an image like that. Um, but what you could do then is, let's say for example that this particular square was my focus point. I'll hit my, put my cursor in it and then do a zoom. And now I've zoomed in on this exact spot. And when I scroll through the rest of my pics, I'm going to maintain that same position. And you can decide, oh, this one looks like it's uh, sharp, this one's not. And it'll help you further refine which photo of a you know, sequence that's very similar 
do you want to work on? This is really good for you know a burst shot where you've taken you know five, ten, twelve images of a sporting event, a child that's uh, constantly moving or running on a playground, things like that. So you know, take a look at the focus points to help you out. Hope you found these two tips useful, and we'll see you again next time. <laughs>